Before we start the show, I'm excited to announce that we have a new sponsor for this podcast, and it's DocRx. DocRx is a family-oriented company dedicated to tailor operational solutions for patient health and compliance programs that increases the quality and efficiency of patient-centered care and always with the mission of the patient's health first. With over 10 years of experience helping doctors and their patients with diagnostic testing, patient monitoring, medical supplies, compliance, wholesale pharmacy, physician dispensing, billing, and much more. DocRx is your patient and health compliance solution, both under one roof. To find out how DocRx can help you, your hospital, pharmacy, or physician's office, see all their services at DocRx.com. That's D-O-C-R-X.com. Now on to today's show. From the perspective that you've got to see and lead by being present a lot of times and trust is a big issue and processes help solve both of those issues. I've lost and and been hurt a lot by being naive and not having the right processes in place, but I'm a much better business person now as a result of those valuable lessons. Hey everybody, welcome to the show. Today we have Michael Presson on. He is with 1-800-RADIATOR. He has a franchise, but he also has four locations. Let's hear the challenges, but also the wins. Hey, I'm Karen. I'm a former CPA, entrepreneur, business consultant with big ideas. Welcome to Cheers to Business. Michael Preston, thank you so much for coming on the show. Tell how we met. Hey, thanks, Karen. We met at the uh, Roadmap for Growth class a couple weeks ago where Rick Miller is leading that, um, and you were one of the subject matter experts. Yeah, I'm just a loud mouth. You know that, right? (laughs) (laughs) I enjoyed it. You were awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you. Danette Richards had invited me on, and there were two other CPAs, one from uh, Crow Shields, Bailey, and then Dennis Sharon from Advizo. So I was in very top company, even though I'm not a CPA anymore, but I just have fun now, and I just don't care about rules. I just don't. So tell us about your business. I own four locations of a franchise called 1-800-RADIATOR. I am started out in Daphne. I bought that location about seven years ago, and then I've added the other locations over the last several years. It is a wholesale auto parts supplier. Okay. So your card says 1-800-RADIATOR and AC. Yeah. Yeah, it's, you can tell by the name when it was, that company was created. It was originally created out of California in kind of a hub-and-spoke warehouse strategy. And then about 15 years ago, they decided to start selling franchises to get local ownership across the country. I love franchises. Katie and I own one franchise. We actually have two territories, Mobile and Baldwin County, for Payroll Vault. Mm -hmm. And people don't realize that's a franchise. Mm. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah. And so this whole go local, hate the chains, don't be, you know, be careful when you're hating. Yeah. Because you don't know whether it's really corporate or if it's franchise. Because mm-hmm. if it's franchise, that could be a local, that could be your neighbor that owns that. Right, exactly. And that's one of the taglines that we talk about is we're a national company with local ownership. There's 225 locations across the country, and in Canada, I own four of them. See, I didn't want to reinvent the wheel. Right. I knew that CPAs cannot make money doing payrolls. It just doesn't make sense because it's the billing structure. Right. People want to wrap themselves around all the business, and I didn't want to reinvent the wheel. Right. And I think that's the smartest thing about franchises. It's all laid out for you. Yeah. Well, I got into the franchise business. We we lived in Memphis before we moved to uh, Fairhope about seven years ago, eight years ago. Um, we owned a little business called Three Dog Bakery. It's based out of Kansas City, and it, it was a, a dog bakery. We baked really? birthday cakes and all fresh, all natural foods. And it was a fascinating little business. And it taught me the value of franchises because I have no history in baking, and neither did my wife. But... They taught us everything we needed to know. We had all the ingredients. We had all of the recipes, and so we were good to go. So when I moved here, uh, I moved here to buy this business, but I was comfortable with the franchise model. So now you went from one franchise, and Katie and I have talked about this before. You know, we're at a good place right now, so we're not looking for growth. But you think about it. I've had a business with multiple locations before and the struggles. And tell us your three top challenges for all those listeners out there that own a business, and it's hard enough as it is, yeah. but then to open up a second location. Yeah. I don't feel like that I'm a control freak, but I've learned I'm much more of a control freak uh, as a small business owner than I ever thought I was before. From the perspective that you've got to 
see and lead by being present uh, a lot of times and and trust is a big issue and processes help solve both of those issues. I've lost and and been hurt a lot by being naive and not having the right processes in place, but I'm a much better business person now as a result of those valuable lessons. That's a really good point because every time I've been burned, I've learned something from, yeah. from it. And I'm not a micromanager. Yeah. I'm just not. I don't have time. I hire smart people. I expect you to do your job. Yep. Same here. I was in the corporate world for 22 years uh, with the medical company and uh, regional leadership and uh, sales leadership and sales operations, you know, moved around quite a bit. So I'm a little comfortable with travel and, and, and comfortable with leading teams that aren't directly in front of me. So I think that looking back, that helped me be prepared to lead multiple locations, right? Secondly, when I got down here, the very first employee I hired, my wife actually found, she used to work at Sam's and I always, we joke that that's the best thing we've ever bought at Sam's is Jessica. And uh, <laughs> Jessica is fantastic. And Jessica is a, a rule follower, a thorough, honest, uh, trustworthy person. Love her to death. That's hard to find. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And there's no way in the world I could have gone to number two, three, or four locations if it hadn't been for Jessica. And every time that we considered it, I asked Jessica first because I wanted to make sure she was okay with us expanding and, and doing these other things. And she was always on board. And that's given me the freedom to be able to lead and not have to operate as much. You know, we talk about people all the time that I couldn't be CFO of 15 companies or whatever it is now, you know, without the people. It's all about the people. Right, right. And so you found your person. Yeah. Do you know how fortunate that is? Yeah, I do. I do. And and I've, I've found more than just a person. You know, I've got another guy named Paul who's my sales manager. He started out as one of my sales reps, left me for a couple of uh, months, came back. Again, he's he's the ultimate salesperson and leads my sales team. And, you know, again, I, he's worth far more than I can ever uh, pay him. Don't give him too many girls now. <laughs> <laughs> That'll backfire on you, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so do they travel as much as you do between locations? Uh, they both travel. Jessica is open to it. Uh, she's got some good friends that live in Birmingham. So when we got that location, she gets to go visit them. And, and she likes getting out every once in a while. Uh, it's always up to her. I don't ever force her. Uh, same thing with Paul. Paul likes to get out there and, and, and change it up a little bit. So yeah, they, they travel a fair amount. All right. So tell all your locations. Okay. So Daphne, Biloxi, New Orleans, and Birmingham. So logistically, you know, finding the perfect location, that's a whole other show. Yeah. And so what do you look for when you go to place a new store? Well, those were all existing locations that I, when I bought them, they came with a warehouse that was already under lease. And so we don't have much retail facing business. So it doesn't have to be a pretty place and, and, a, and a strategic place to get traffic. It has to be functional and, and allow me to get out to deliver because we deliver parts to customers. So who are your customers? Mostly repair shops, collision centers, dealerships. So, ah. so we, we, are the, we are the wholesale warehouse to, uh, to anybody who works on cars. So if you need to get your car repaired and you take it into the shop that you trust and you like and they need a part, if I supply that part, they're going to pick up the phone and call us to see if we have it then turn around and let you know that, that they have it and how much it's going to be. So you're a Tommy boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to a certain degree, yeah. <laughs> Big man in little coat. <laughs> Great movie. <laughs> Sorry. That's all right. <laughs> I, thought, I had something about a bull's ass, but I know yeah. I won't get it right. So. <laughs> now, that's cool because when you think about franchises, you think about the retail side, not the wholesale right. side. Exactly, exactly. So when I was was laid off from my corporate world and I was looking for a business to buy, I, one of the things I wanted to do, I wanted to be more on the wholesale side, more of the, the direct business to Get business. Get away from people. <laughs> <laughs> well, it wasn't that, but uh, it's a different world and, and, and your hours and your, you know, your stress level. Uh, but this is... This Get away t- from people? Yeah. <laughs> My wife is the people person. I'm I'm uh, less as much, so I'm a little bit more introverted. You were the first one because I, I kind of invited the group at Rick Miller's class and uh, Mobile Chamber. I said, you know, hey, if anybody wants to come on the podcast, let me know. You were the first one. You emailed me while I was still there. <laughs> well, it was fascinating. I mean, first of all, you're, you're, you're fantastic in, oh, in teaching thanks. us. I mean, seriously, uh, you were very hands-on, very 
uh, open, very uh, encouraging. And and I'm looking to learn. You know, I, I've been doing this for eight years, but I still joke that I'm flying the plane as I build it. You know, I, I really don't know what I don't know yet. And so I'm, I'm trying to learn from other business people. And that's the main reason why I'm in the class. That's probably the smartest thing anyone can say. That I've ever said. <laughs> well, no, anyone, anyone, anyone that admits that I don't know what I don't know yet. Right. You know, that's genius. Yeah. The ones that think that I've owned a business for this many years and I know everything. Yeah. You're no, screwed. No, Sorry. You don't. No. You don't. no. And then that's what got me in trouble, I as mentioned before. So I I ran into some problems. Multiple, my, my first uh, or my second location I bought was the New Orleans location and everything went great for about two years. And then all of a sudden I had some an employee in there that, that was a pathological liar and started stealing and lying about it and framing other people in the in the business that as soon as I get close to figuring it out, we would fire the wrong person. And uh, it was a, it was a mess. Uh, finally, I caught caught this this person, and we got rid of them, and we had to rebuild the business because we lost a lot of trust with our customers. But now I've got a guy over there who's who's doing a great job. I mean, he's managing the day to day operation. I trust him. I also trust and verify, quoting Ronald Reagan, in making sure. And so I put in some processes that we had daily reporting. I put in a Brinks machine so that the cash immediately is deposited. So I don't have to worry about that grabbing legs and, and walking off. Mm-hmm. I tell you what, it, it, the people I've had on the show, it's kind of a pattern for the ones that have the the thieves and the liars that they could fire, you know, four to five people before they get to the source. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It was it was unbelievable. And having different locations, it's harder to control that because you want to trust people. I think it's human nature to want to trust and believe that person when they say something. Right. So I think the pattern of that is. You know, when you've hired your second person, mm-hmm. because this one person told you it was somebody else, your alert button needs to go off. It rocked my world. I mean, I, I've I've never suffered from anxiety in my life, but there were nights that I didn't sleep and you know, I lost weight. And it it was hard, and not because just the, the financial loss, but because of the, the trust issue. Because yeah. I'm a trusting person. And, you know, I, I've told everybody I've ever hired over my entire career that if you don't lie, steal, or cheat from me, we're going to get along pretty good. Yeah. And this person did all three within the first six months and was so good at it, I didn't I didn't catch it. I was blind to it. You know, I had somebody steal from me one time, and, and it was time. You may think, well, what's time? No, it adds up. No, it's money. Yeah. It's money, and I think that once you that trust factor is gone, I mean, you're done. Yeah. It's done. Yeah, exactly. And exactly. We write the book because it's not going to go back to the way it was. Correct. You're right. So what's your hardest part of having multiple locations? I travel a lot. And as I've gotten older, I don't like to travel as much. I used to travel a lot in my previous life. And I missed a lot, you know, when my kids were younger. But I kind of like my wife. And I kind of want to be home. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so the travel is, is, is tough. But I think more than anything, it's just not being able to be there and, and solve an issue immediately. I've got a good team now that calls me or calls Jessica or Paul and we, we solve it together. You know, when you build the right core values around, I'm trying to train them to solve the problem and then then call me yeah, because they know pretty much now how I'm going to answer that question after working with me for a while. And let's let's be honest. Let's put out a campfire instead of building to a forest fire. Let's get it <laughs> solved. It's much easier that way. So let's solve it with for the customer first, and then we can we can deal with it. So that that's the hard part. Yeah, I think, you know, making sure that customer's happy first and then working on how we prevent this in the future. Yeah, because we've made that mistake in, in several times. We've argued, even though we were right, we've argued about uh, a warranty issue with a customer when in the grand scheme of things, it didn't doesn't matter. And you don't want to lose a big customer over a, a small insignificant price issue. And so we, we, we've gotten much better at that. As we've grown. And Picking your battles and watching the dollars instead of arguing over the pennies? Yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's a big deal. In my world, I have multiple businesses, so it's kind of like multiple locations. It's, mm-hmm. you know, different things. Sure. And I think people around me get aggravated at me when I don't think something's very important. Mm-hmm. Well, it's not. <laughs> not to me. It's not the biggest thing on fire. Right. And you have to take, you know, what's Watch out for the hundreds and the thousands, and don't worry about the pennies. Right, you know, but the, the that's flip, a hard lesson to learn, though. It is. The flip side of that is, if it's really important to that employee, then 
I need to slow down because I tend to go too fast. Yeah. I need to slow down and see it the way they're seeing it. And why is it so important to them right now? And instead of what I tend to do is direct and answer the question or solve the problem and move on, I need to do a better job at times listening to them and why is this a big issue to you and let them solve it on their own. That's where I'm trying to get Karen. I'm not there. I it's try. hard. Yeah, it is hard. It, it is, is hard. hard because you know this is going on for in, the, in your peripheral vision that you need to go take care of, but this person in front of you really needs, and we all, a little TLC, basically. Right. I'll never forget, back in the CPA firm, Noel, she would rub people's shoulders yeah. you know, <laughs> to give that TLC, you know, like a little <laughs> kitty cat rubbing, yeah. you know, the paw down the arm. And... Sometimes people just need a little TLC to, to know that they're they're heard. Yeah, that's a little creepy. I couldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> it was all women. No, we were no, okay. I understand. <laughs> but I'm a hugger. I, I'm, I'm a touchy feely guy. So this whole COVID thing is weird for me too. You know. But yeah, I understand. You know, I need to slow down, and whether it's physical or just emotional and listening, I, I, I'm getting better at it. It's hard. And I'm more man than I am woman. There's only really three parts that make me a woman. And, you know, other than that, I don't change. I don't paint my house. I don't move my furniture. I don't have curtains. I don't care. And so, you know, it's hard for me to be that girlfriend. Hey, how's the kids? Let's have a baby shower. You know, no, I don't do Tupperware. And so I'm guilty of what you're saying. I am very much guilty. And I have to physically, mentally make myself stop. To make that person feel important. Sure. And then I feel bad for that. Sure. So I'm counting in my head while I try to make this person, I, I try to look legitimate, you know, like concerned. <laughs> well, I've been married for 34 years, so I've gotten pretty good at that. Well, I've been married 32 and I still suck at it. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Leslie. <laughs> no, it's, it's tough to to make yourself stop when yeah. you have that yeah. much going on. Yeah. I go, I go too fast at times. I think yeah. fast. I change my mind. Pretty fast if, if I see that it's a better reason. And that messes with people, too. I know they can't stand that. Yeah. But you said. Right. That's right. You well, know, well, this is a rule, but you're going to have to be flexible on that rule. And that's hard for, for, for people who are rule followers. And, yeah. And the boss said, this is the rule. And it's so, okay. Well, now I want you to change it. <laughs> okay. Right. Right. I'm guilty. I'm so guilty. So any regrets of opening multiple locations? No, not at all. I, well, let me back up. My banker would probably say there's some regrets. No, it, you know what? Every location I bought was the stray dog that we adopted, essentially. It was uh, an underperforming situation, with the exception of the New Orleans. It was doing pretty well and then got into the stray dog category. You bought businesses from other franchisees that were already existing. Correct. Okay. And underperforming. So as a result, to get them where they needed to be, I had to invest uh, more in inventory and people and locations at, at times. And so it's been a bigger financial investment than the timing that I probably should have used. But it is what it is, and we're we're doing well. So are you looking to get more? If my wife hears this podcast, the answer is no. <laughs> um, but no, I think it, it's possible. Uh, you know, this is a big geography uh, because we live in the southeast, you know, we're not as con- concentrated if we were in the northeast or the Atlantic seaboard. But um, there are other locations that, that are contiguous, and I'm, I might. Uh, I could at this point if I, if I wanted to. But I've, I've got to get these stable and, and really kicking off some profit before we, we do right, that. Right, right. Get, get your capital loaded up. Yeah, exactly. My daughter Katie with Payroll Vault won Franchisee of the Year, and there's an International Franchise Association. Yeah. And so we went to D.C. for her to get her award, and I met a guy. He was he had owned 47 Wendy's franchises. Wow. Can you imagine? Wow, no. And he sold them. Yeah. <laughs> I know why. Yeah. And now he was involved with the walk-ons out of New Orleans. And we have one here in Mobile, the restaurants, walk-ons. Okay. Yeah. But, I mean, he— he knew franchises inside and out, and it yeah. didn't matter, you know, whether you have 10 or whether you have 40 of them. Right. You know, the concept's basically the same of getting your people in place. Yeah. And that example is exactly why I was comfortable in getting other locations, because I had people say, well, why would you do that? How are you going to sell four locations if you, in, in, as opposed to one? It's easier to sell one. I said, no, there, there's examples all across the, the uh, franchise world where people own 10, 20, 30 locations, and... That attracts the attention of investors, you know, who, who have a larger amount of money to, to spend. 
and they don't necessarily want to buy a job. They want to buy a business. And so that's the way I'm trying to structure this is that, you know, I'd like to retire at some point, uh, even though it, it's later than what most people would because I've, I've got to do something. But I wanted to be able to operate as a business and not me have to be in one particular place all the time. I love it. I mean, it's it's my whole life. People say, you sold. You, I thought you retired. I've never retired. Yeah. No, yeah. not truly. Not no. truly. So, Michael, what made you choose this one? What was your process in looking at a – so I, I guess you had a goal of buying a franchise. Actually, no. I had a goal of buying a business. So when I was laid off of my corporate job, we were living in Memphis at the time, and the quick, the quick version of the story is that I was looking to buy a business there. And every January, my wife and I take a little marriage retreat, and uh, we randomly picked the Grand uh, Hotel and drove down here. I had a lot of Marriott points at the time, and I'd never been to Fairhope. So we came down here and had a great weekend. When I got back in town, I had a business broker that I was using who told me about this franchise location. He had no idea I had been just down here. And over the next 48 hours, I had two other contacts with people that I knew that either had owned a franchise at 1-800-RADIATOR or knew somebody who did. And so it's like, okay, God, I'm slow. That was a I, sign. Yeah, but I'm not, I'm not an idiot. So I checked into it. And because I was comfortable with the franchise, because this kind of checked a lot of the boxes that we had put in place, we came and looked at it, and a month or so later, we bought it. And the rest is history. The rest is history. That is so interesting. Yeah, it's a great story. Yeah, That's it a is a story. great story. So now with Mako Logistics, my husband and I are working together, and I'm finding that the, the work conversations are going into the night. Mm. So it sounds like your wife is very involved. My wife is very involved in a lot of things, but not necessarily the business. Really? Uh, yeah. she's comes up there. She's the... Head cheerleader, uh, my team loves her, as most anybody who meets her does. Uh, but she's never worked full-time in, in the business. She's involved in a lot of different other charity issues and Bible studies. And she actually just started a new charity the last few months called Hope Blooms. So Hope Blooms, what is that? My wife's a cancer survivor. She was diagnosed with breast cancer last fall. And she found, uh, Karen, that through every week while she was going through treatment, Somebody was bringing her flowers, and sometimes it was from people she didn't even know. So she had this idea that, and has followed through, and has a team. They just started a couple of weeks ago where if you are having a wedding uh, with your wedding, you can tell the wedding planner that I want to donate these flowers after the wedding. And so That is so simply genius. She sweeps in there. We went Saturday night to a wedding, and we got three carloads of flowers that were, would have normally been in the dumpster. Uh, on Sunday morning, and her team this morning is repurposing those, putting them in vases and taking them to people who are sick, nursing homes, uh, all all over the Eastern Shore. And so it's really, really incredible. You're going to make me cry. Yeah, it's pretty it's pretty special. That uh, is so cool. So how how does anybody, and we need to get this out there. Yeah, well, I'll I'll have you inter- meet her, and you can might have her come in here and talk to you more about it. But I it's would a, love to. She's a, she's a fantastic lady, and she's got a great team, and so they're just getting it started. They've they've made a couple of deliveries this last week. This is the second wedding that we've done, and um, it's going to be a pretty neat thing. So for all those businesses out there, tell who your perfect customer is, and then how they can find you. My perfect customer uh, is somebody who pays on time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I've got a perfect customer. I mean, we've got a lot of really, really good automotive repair and collision centers in Mobile and, and Daphne here that I have built some really good relationships with. You know, 1-800-RADIATOR is our phone number, no matter what area code you're calling from. Uh, and we've set up a call center in my Daphne location, so calls from Birmingham and New Orleans and Biloxi all roll into there. Uh, which makes it so much easier to manage as well. Uh, our local number is 251-621-0411, but we, we deliver parts all over the Gulf Coast. Can they go online and order? They can. Um, we can set them up. If they're a shop that doesn't do business with us now, we can, if they give us a call, we can set them up on an e site, our e site, and then they can order it that way. I recently started doing business with Tony Wilcox, mm-hmm. him and his partner, Eric, and they work with iCheck. And it's links that t- works with your QuickBooks. You'll never pay another credit card fee. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it passes it on, or people can do ACH for $2.95. Okay. Literally saving hundreds of thousands of dollars. Okay. Yeah, so I'll, I'll give you some more info on that. Well, Michael Preston, I want to thank you for coming on the show today. Yeah. You know, we do a cheers. Yeah. 
And so I'm going to say cheers to people having the guts to have multiple locations <laughs> <laughs> and stepping out there, you know, be yeah. willing to be able to to jump and let that parachute open. Yeah. I would say my cheers is to the, the small mom and pop shop owners who just put the customer first. There are some great examples here in Mobile that, um, that are just fantastic at what they do. Oh, man, that's great. Well, Michael Preston, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show today. Oh, thank you, Karen. This has been great. I've enjoyed it. Please be sure to subscribe to Cheers to Business podcast on iTunes or anywhere else that you get your podcast. Visit our Facebook and be sure to give us a like. And if you have any questions or topics you'd like us to discuss, shoot us an email from the website, cheers to business.com.